Welcome back. We're at Exodus chapter 4, verses 24 to 26. And this is a section that a lot of people look at this and they kind of wiggle their eyes and they scratch their head and they say, well, what's that doing there? This is a story that many commentaries disagree on. A lot of people really can't figure out what this is about. Let's read it. Let's see what it said. Now it came about at the lodging place on the way that the Lord met him and sought to put him to death. Then Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and threw it at Moses' feet. And she said, You are indeed a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let him alone. At that time, she said, You are a bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. So we're on our way to Egypt. Uh, God called Moses to go, and now he's going. He's got his family on board, his two kids and his wife. And, uh, but guess what? It looks like Moses didn't do something kind of key here. He didn't circumcise his, his boy. And now he's going back to enforce God's rule for his people. And part of the rule is in Genesis 17. You can read it there. The covenant is very explicit. The, the, the males have to be circumcised. If they're not circumcised, they're cut off from God's people. So you know, this is kind of like a death sentence. You've, you've got to be circumcised at this time, in this place, in this situation. This was kind of an absolute. This was non-negotiable. But Moses hadn't done it. And it's kind of interesting because God is sending Moses out on this mission. This mission, to, he's the main human agent to deliver Israel from oppression. But Mo, everything in Moses' life is not completely in order. And I hope you're noticing that. And sometimes God will send us on a mission, and it may be that every single thing isn't perfectly in order. Maybe your office isn't straightened up. Maybe your, your, your car isn't all cleaned up. But God sends you on the way to go and do something, and, and, and he's sending Moses to go. But this thing wasn't in order. And then it says he sought to kill him on the way. Who is it, by the way, that sought? To, is it Moses that sought to be killed, or is it Gershom, his firstborn son? Now, he's just threatening to kill the firstborn son of Egypt, so that's kind of an interesting piece in there. But, but the text says he here. It's not explicit about who it is. Different commentators have different thoughts about this. And while we don't know absolutely in an absolute sense, what we do know is this. God is demanding that, Mo, that this child be circumcised. Moses hasn't really done what he was supposed to do. Moses is telling on himself right here. It's kind of interesting. You know, the Bible doesn't cover this stuff up. Like, go read the, go read the Quran or something else and see, see how many mistakes Muhammad makes. But in the Bible, the mistakes that the main protagonists, uh, the main people, the main characters in the story, that are real people, the mistakes they make are, are real and they're included. You know, the warts and all. And so that's what you've got going on here is uh, Moses is telling on himself. There's something he didn't do. Now, there's another interesting parallel here with, with Balaam and the donkey. Do you remember that story up there in Numbers 22 or so? And so Balaam's on his way. He's, he's, they're bribing him with money. He's going to go and pronounce a curse over Israel. He was a true prophet of God. He apostatizes. And he was on his way to collect the money. He was on his way to do it, to curse Israel. And on the way, remember the, the donkey? He started going in the wrong direction, and Balaam starts beating his donkey. And what it was, it was the angel of the Lord was standing in the way to kill him. And so the donkey saved Balaam from his own rash behavior. Here we have Zipporah, the wife of Moses. Moses is on his way to take care of things that God told him to take care of, but he isn't taking care of this. And Zipporah is the one who circumcises the boy. And so Zipporah saves Moses or the child, if the child was the one that was sought to be killed. Either which way, Zipporah stands up and she's doing God's will here and God lets him go on. Now, there's also a piece of God's grace going on here, too, because, because Zipporah must have known ahead of time. I mean, God could have zapped these guys at any time he wanted, right? He could have just killed him and made a point right there. But somehow Zipporah uh, knows ahead of time she's got to do it and it, Moses hasn't done it. And so she takes up and she does the circumcising. And so, yeah, so she uh, there's some grace here involved because she knows to take care of it. She addresses it, and God says, okay, I'm okay with that. It's all settled now. And you know, God is for us. He's always for us. But a lot of times, he, you know, he's 100% for us. A lot of times, we're kind of only half-heartedly for him. So we need to put everything in order. And Moses did not have everything in order, but thankfully, 
Zipporah set it in order, and uh, the day was saved. It shows us that God cares about things that he's commanded. All right, hey, we'll see you next back at our next episode as we see what happens next. God bless.